Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all the other things will be added unto you. You know the problem is that we are all looking for the other things. We are all battling for the other things. We are all doing things to, 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 to go to our purpose, our destiny, and doing with the other things. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom. Those things will automatically come. Seek his righteousness and those things will automatically come. As you heard, I had a dream this morning. and Let me, let me explain you this dream. I was on a road, tar road. And this tar road went downhill. Up to the end, there was a T-junction. You can only turn to the left or to the right. And it's a dangerous downhill. So they wanted to make some uh, uh, signs to tell the people there's an end. And they thought, the authorities thought they're going to put a, a light uh, a warning light on top of the road. So they planted the pole and they had a pole over the road so the light was right on top of the road so that when the people travel on the road they see the light and it's a warning. But unfortunately that light was not high enough. So the big trucks came and the big trucks were too high and they were touching on, on the light. So the authorities came together there, and I don't know where I came from, but I, I was standing there, and I heard what they were discussing. They said that the big trucks are too high, so we need to do something so that they won't touch that light. And one said, well, what we have to do, we'll have to dig up the road and lower the road and tar it again. And I thought by myself, why will you do that? You only need to put a half a meter of pole next to the pole to lift up the pole. Why dig up the road and, 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 and make the road lower? And I woke up. And the Lord said, this is what's happening many times in this world. Because everybody is born created with a purpose and they are going to the purpose without the wisdom of God and now they're taking the long way, the expensive way, the difficult way to reach the goal where if they pray to God, God will enlighten them and God will give them exactly the right answer. You believe that? So young men, you will see, and young women, you will see visions. If you come and you receive a vision, come to Pastor Leon and tell the vision so that we can hear the visions that is coming. And the more matured men, not the old men, the more mature men will see dreams. And now I've shared the dream that the Lord gave to me. So let us seek his kingdom first. And all the other things will be added unto you. This morning I want to preach to you. And the title of my message is this. Do you know Jesus? You say, what do you mean? I mean... <coughs> Do you know Jesus or have you heard about Jesus? Have you read in the word of God about Jesus? Have you read the miracles and the wonders and the signs and all the things that happened, what Jesus did on the earth? Have, but my question today, do you know him? When we go to the word of God... In Matthew chapter 16, we see that the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 13, Matthew 16 verse 13, it says, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, 
He asked his disciples, so now Jesus comes to his disciples and he asks them a question. But he first starts with other people. He says to them, he says, what, does, what do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now he's got a reason to ask this. He knows what they are saying. But he's got a reason. And he said, what do they say? And the disciples said to the Lord Jesus, well, maybe you are John the Baptist or Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then Jesus did not comment on what they were saying. He just turned to them and he said, but you. And that's what I want to do today to you today. What do you say? Who is Jesus? In this portion of scripture we see that in verse 16, Peter, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus was very happy. Because now suddenly... They have a revelation. Suddenly, the disciples is not checking on flesh and blood. They are hearing already. Remember, this is before the Holy Spirit outpouring. When the Holy Spirit was poured out, the Holy Spirit came from, from heaven inside of them. And the Holy Spirit can speak to us. But this was before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That means... How will they know? But they, Peter, did know. So Jesus was very excited and he answered, he said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. That's the old name of Peter. Because now with the revelation that you have, you will have a new name. Let me tell you something. You got a name in heaven. It's probably not the same name as what you have on the earth. But your name in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ gave to you because he knew you already before the foundation of the earth and he knew what your purpose and your plans are. So he said, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father that is in heaven. I pray that the church of Jesus Christ will hear from heaven. I pray that we will not have meetings together like those people standing next to the, that, that, that warning light and discussing, let's dig up the road instead of just lifting up the pole. But we will have wisdom to get the anointing of God in this place and in our lives, in our hearts, in our businesses, in our families, in our homes, in our city, in our nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Jesus went on in verse 18. He says, and I also say to you that you are Peter. That's the new name. He first said uh, Simon Barjona. Now it's Peter. And he says, on this rock I will build my church. Now, we need to build this church on the rock, not on sand. Because if it's been built on sand it will collapse when the storms are coming. And let me tell you something, the storms are here. With this COVID-19, there are a lot of storms, and it wants to break the church, it wants to close the church. But let me tell you something, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church shall not be closed, because he said, I will build the church, and the gates of hell shall not avail against it. In other words, what the devil is planning today for the church to keep the church closed can not happen. The church is the answer. And we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we need to know him. He says, I will build my church in the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And then he goes further in verse 19. He says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. 
When will you receive the keys of the kingdom of heaven? When you have a revelation of who Jesus is. Because that happened here. When, he, when Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. When you have a revelation of who Jesus Christ is, then you will receive keys. Keys to do what? Whatever you bind on the earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, what is it that we can lose? What is it that we can bind on this earth? What does it all mean? Binding and loosening. Let me tell you something that the angels of God are created even before us in heaven. But Lucifer and a third of the angels rebelled against God and God threw them out. But angels don't have a body like you and me. And they can't operate on this earth if they don't have a body. In other words, the angelic beings are looking for a body. And when they get a body, they want to destroy that body. They want to destroy that family. They want to destroy your marriage. They want to destroy everything. But we have power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we have revelation of who Jesus is, to bind that. And they have to listen. Because the words of your mouth are very, very important. What you say with your mouth goes out. And every demonic force will hear it. So when you bind those forces in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they have to obey. But it takes faith in Jesus' name. It takes faith upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's my question. That's my title of this message. Do you know Christ in such a way that you can speak with your mouth what you believe in your heart? There are also are good angels. <clears throat> in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, it says that the angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who inherit salvation. We have inherit salvation, so we have the good angels on our side to lead us and to help us and to warn us if we are spiritually tuned in to the things of, of the spirit realm. Let me tell you something. We're living in a time that we need to know the spiritual realm much more than the natural realm. All the other things will automatically come if you know the spiritual realm. We have received power if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, to bind those wrong spirits and to release the right spirits or the right angels. Wrong spirits bring curses. Hello? Wrong spirits bring curses on the earth and the reason is to destroy us. In the last couple of months, when we went out, my wife and I, to different churches to preach, I was amazed to see the one time my wife made an invitation for those that are family curses, and a lot of people came to the front. The problem is we don't know how to deal with that. Those family curses comes from then generation, down to generations, down to generations. And if you don't stop it, it will continue into the next generation. That's why we need the wisdom of God. And those spirits are building strongholds. And they're building strongholds to, 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 to destroy families, to destroy businesses, to destroy cities, to destroy the nations. They are out to harm, they're out to kill, they're out to steal, and they're out to destroy. Let me tell you something this morning. The safest place is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. The safest place for you to be is with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Here we receive revelations from above by the Holy Spirit that is on the inside of us and it helps us and encourages us and we are encouraging one another and we are strengthening you so that you will be able to stand during the week. That's why it's so important to gather together with the believers so that you can have faith in your heart to stand against all those things that are happening in the world today. All those evil attacks from the devil. So let me show you an example in the Bible that happened when Jesus was still on the earth. And that is in John chapter 4. John chapter 4, and it starts with verse 3. That Jesus left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Specific place. Now Jacob's well was there. So when Jacob lived there with his 12 sons and one daughter, remember he had also a daughter, Dina, and 12 sons, they had blessings because they did a well, and that well, after many, many generations. Remember, Abraham was 2,000 years before Jesus. Abraham and Isaac, Isaac and Jacob. So it must be maybe 1,800 years that all those people had water out of the well from Jacob, Jacob's well, and all the livestock had water to drink. But now Jesus came to that well, and he was wearied, and the Bible said, he sat down by the well and he asked his disciples to go to town and to buy food and to come back. And while he was sitting there, a woman came, a Samaritan woman came in verse 7. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Then the woman of Samaria said, how is it possible? That you, being a Jew, ask a drink from the Samaritan woman? What is this? Is this racial discrimination? No. Because the Samaritans worship the same God, and Jacob lived there, and he had 12 sons, and many generations came from them. It's not racial discrimination. This was religious discrimination. Why? Because the Samaritans believed in the first five books of the Old Testament. And they said, we need to worship God on this Mount Gerizim that is there. But the Jew says, no, we believe in the whole our Old Testament, and we believe in circumcision, and we believe that we need to serve God in Jerusalem. So there's a difference of opinion, difference of religion, and I know that there's a lot of different religions in this world today. But I believe that God is going to bring them together. All those different moves need to come together. And uh, we were very happy in Durban that we saw some of the moves and that they allowed us to speak to them and, and just bring moves together. Hallelujah. This will happen all over. So Jesus said to her, If you knew the gift of God, I ask you this morning, do you know Jesus? If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living waters. So this woman said, hmm, Sir, you don't have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where will you get that living water from? Are you greater than our father, Jacob? So they were descendants of Jacob. Are you greater than he? 
And Jesus answered her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. That's in verse 13 and in verse 14. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Where is that kind of water? The water from the well, you will thirst again. But the water that I will give you, then you will never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. She didn't understand this. But at least she reached out and she said to this man who is Jesus, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And then Jesus says, okay, if you want to draw of this living water, you first have to deal with your past. If you want to drink this living water that is available in the house of God, in the church of Jesus Christ, you'll have to deal with your past. That means you first have to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You first need to ask Him to forgive your sin. He is the one that can wash you whiter than snow. And if you are whiter than snow, then you have right to come to the waters of life and drink of that life water that gives you everlasting life. Hallelujah. Everlasting life. So, <clears throat> Jesus said, he goes in the past, call your husband. <laughs> she said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you had five husbands, five marriages, five that went into divorce, five of them, and the one that you have now is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. So the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Think of it. The devil has already destroyed five marriages. That's not normal. Why is that? I'm telling you, there was a curse in that place. And Jesus is there to remove the curse. I believe that God must give us wisdom to find out if there's a curse on our business, if there's a curse on our marriage, if there's a curse in our generations. Because God wants you to have the best. He loves you so much that he went to the cross to die on the cross for you and he wants the best things. But there is a devil that wants to destroy you. Sir, I perceive that you are the prophet then she comes with a spiritual question and she said to the Lord Jesus Christ, where do we need to serve God? On this mountain, that's Mount Gerizim, or by the Jews says in Jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship. And Jesus spoke to her and said, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father, you will worship what you do not know. We know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers, are you a true worshiper? I, I, I believe it's very important. When I was in Durban, one of the pastors came to me and he says, he remember when he came a couple of years ago when Dr. Jonathan David was in this church, he came here and they started worshiping. He says he's never heard that before. It was so good. He says, one pastor came to me and he said, you know what? One Sunday I want to bring my family from Durban and come and sit in your church just to experience the worship. Church, it's very important that we come together and worship. You've got to worship the Lord from your heart not from the mind. 
from down here. And God will open up doors because God loves the worship of his people. God wants to do a lot of good things to you, but he expects you to do the right thing from your side. He says, we will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth before the Father is seeking such to worship him. Will he find in this church those that know how to worship? I want to say yes. He will. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now this woman comes with more word. She says to Jesus, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And here is the only time when I see that Jesus revealed himself. He said, I will speak to you, am he. I will speak. In other words, Jesus revealed to this woman who he really was. That's why I ask you the question, do you know who Jesus is? It's very important. So what this woman did, she filled her water pot with water. She went down into the city and she spoke to the man. She called the man and she says, listen, I come and hear a man that spoke to me what I've done in the past. Can he be the Christ? And they were all nuskirach, curious. Sorry. <laughs> they wanted to know, who is this man? So she brought those men in the city to Jesus. And when they came to Jesus, they asked Jesus if he won't stay a little bit longer. Look what he said in verse 39. And many of the Samarit Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. You know, how will you know a, a person's background? Only by the Holy Spirit with the gift of discernment. Gift of discernment will start operating in our lives again so that God will reveal to us what happened in your life before to restore it. God is a restorer. He doesn't want to punish you for it. He wants to restore you. So they said, we want to come in here. So the Samaritans had come to him and urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not because of what you said, for we have heard for ourselves, and that is my cry this morning from my heart, that you will know the Lord Jesus Christ from your own heart. Because they said, we came because we, or the woman heard what you said about her, but now we have heard ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now, Why did they go to the story of this woman, the woman at the well? Because, listen to me very carefully, the city that they came from is under a curse. And they lived under this curse for a very, very long time. And when Jesus came to that city, he removed that curse. And that is what I pray that God will do in every, every area of our nation and of our country. Remove the curse of the devil. When Jesus comes and he will break the curse and he will come and set the people free. But something terrible happened in that place before many years ago. And that thing that happened is still a stronghold in the hands of the devil. 
to break up marriages. That's why her marriage was broken up five times. So much so that she says, I'm not going to marry anymore. I'm just going to live with another man. In Genesis chapter 34, let me turn there and I'll show you what happened in that place. And how Jesus solved that problem. In Genesis 34, we read about the daughter of Jacob. Now, in verse 1, Now, Dina, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamer, a Hivite, a prince of the country, so he was the son of a prince, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her. In other words, he raped her. And that was a terrible thing to do. But then he came and he said to his father, go to Jacob and tell him, because I want to marry her. So in verse 5, it says, And Jacob heard that they had defiled Dina, his daughter. Now his sons were with the livestock in the field, so Jacob held his peace until the sons came home. Then he told his sons about it. And, uh, verse 7. So the sons of Jacob came in from the field and they heard it. And the men were grieved and very angry. Remember he had 12 sons. They were grieved and angry. One daughter, one sister. And she's been raped. He says, because of uh, in Israel by laying with Jacob's daughter, a thing that ought not to be done. But now they were talking and they want to marry Dina. But then the boy said, no, how can she marry Dina? We believe in circumcision. They don't believe in circumcision. How can we come together? So what is this again? A religious belief. And it's very important, young people, when you look for a marriage uh, companion, someone, it doesn't matter what race, it matters what they believe. The belief system needs to be the same. So they said they can't do it because we are circumcised. He is not circumcised. How can he take our daughter? We cannot do such a thing. Look in verse 14. And they said to them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one who is, is uh, who be a reproach to us, who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. So they went back to the people in the city and they said, this is what they say. We have to be circumcised. So let us circumcise one another. Let us all be circumcised in the city. Then they will be like us. We can take their flock and their woman and, and, and we will can one, one. But you can't be circumcised without knowing the purpose of circumcision. You must know why. So that's also not right. So but they heard it, and they said, okay, we will be circumcised. Now, circumcision is a very difficult thing when you are already grown up, and it makes you very sick, and on the third day, you are very, very weak. And when they were very, very weak, two brothers, two sons of Jacob, went out, Simeon and Levi, each one took a sword, and they went into the city, and they killed all those men from the city. Can you believe that? So wrongs were happening there. The first wrong was that Dina was raped. The second wrong is that they commanded them to be circumcised. And the third wrong was that they killed them. All those negative things are hanging on that place. No wonder this woman at the well 
Five marriages failed. It should not happen. It is the curse of the devil. And the devil wants to continue with that and destroy everything. But he is a liar. He cannot destroy it. So Jacob came to his two sons and says, Listen, you have troubled me. Now I'm in trouble. Now they will come against us and they will start killing us. But they said, Should he treat our sister like a harlot? All these evils are also today in the land, every land, every country, every city, all over. God must help us. We must go against those strongholds of the devil. He cannot continue to do that. Marriages did not last because of the curse. Today we must have Jesus in our hearts so that we can discern by the Spirit that the devil tries what he wants to do against us. Then in Jesus' name we have the power to lose and to bind. And I want you to concentrate on this, that there is power in your words. When you speak and you bind those evil forces that's probably in your family, that's probably upon your business, that's probably in your house. Those words goes out. And the words are powerful because Jesus, when there was darkness on the face of the earth in Genesis chapter 1, he spoke and he said, let there be light and darkness flee by words. We are created in the image and in likeness of God the Father. You have power in your mouth to use that for circumstances. Get your wife together and agree. At night when your children are sleeping, lay your hands on the children and pray and prophesy blessings over them. Because those words have power. They won't even know what you are doing because they're sleeping. But there is power released over them to protect them. We can lose wonderful blessings over our people, over our nation, over everything that we are involved in. And that is why I want to say when things are going wrong constantly, Check out if it is a demonic force and take authority of it. Sometimes we open a door for the devil and he comes in and he comes to steal and to destroy. Remember what happened to Cain? When Abel came to him, he killed him. And the blood was on the earth crying out to the Father. For mercy. His blood was crying out. Voices will go and we will have power with the voice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to Cain, Now you are cursed from the earth which has opened its mouth and received your brother's blood from your hands. Curses is a violent expression of evil upon others. And I want you to bow your heads now in Jesus' name. And let us pray to the Father that everything that is not of God will be bound.